Hey, so it's one in the morning and I just finished this. Want to just put my thoughts down on verbal paper as it were. I haven't read any other reviews really, watched any other analysis videos about this book. Um, I didn't really like it is the general nutshell. That's not fair. I did finish it and I read it quickly. But um, I, it just, it didn't, uh, I don't think it really lived up to the promise of its premise, which was pitched to me as a science fiction premise, which it really isn't. And I'm going to do this first part without spoilers. I'll let you know when the spoilers come in. But the basic premise is there's a guy who lives to age 44, 42 or 44, and then has a heart attack, dies after living this life of kind of professional stagnation and unhappy uh, married life, his relationship with his wife has spoiled, and dies full of regret and then wakes up immediately afterwards as an 18 year old in his freshman year of college in 1963, and then lives the, the whole duration of his life over again, comes to realize what's happening and, and uses all of his past memories of his life to make a series of fantastically lucrative investments, etc. And then it turns out that this is a cycle that he is caught in where he lives for his entire duration of his life up to his original heart attack, has the heart attack again, and then wakes back up as a younger man. And the novel is a kind of journey through all of these iterations of his life and the decisions that he makes and the consequences that he sees from those decisions. His shifting set of motivations, which you could guess what they are. And then it does have a couple twists and turns. So that's the end of the, the no spoiler portion. I'll, I'll just say as a general overall thought, I thought it was an okay book, maybe even a good book. But the, the goodness was buoyed mostly by the premise itself, and the, the quality of the writing wasn't great. It was kind of hit you over the head with the moral or the message or the emotional content. It was a little bit on the nose, a little too showboaty. There was this irritating, recurring compulsion by the author to name drop all of the, the high culture people that he's interested in. There are these, it just, it happens throughout the entire book and it really adds nothing. I don't understand what the point of it was other than to give it this air of, of high culture. Um, and uh, j just like all, all of the emotional content of the book, and there is some, there is some emotional resonance to it. It's just hammered home so explicitly. It's just in this purple prose, this overwrought prose, kind of hallmark, cringy, um, prose and a lot of the, the the payoff the emotional payoff of the book is is like jarringly cliche um so that's what i didn't like about it what i did like about it is it's an effective premise it's interesting it does move along there are some i don't know some you know some good moments and the characters are memorable and uh you know memorable enough interesting enough so overall, I give it like 6.5 out of 10. As a science fiction book, I don't think it even qualifies as one. Um, I think it's it's really kind of caught in the middle between wanting to be sci-fi and wanting to be um, like a, a you know traditional, more traditional literature, drama literature story. Um, so getting into spoilers. I uh, I expected reading this book that we were going to end up kind of landing the plane, as it were, on the very familiar runway of he's ultimately going to break himself out of this cycle of death and rebirth by coming to accept that his original life as he lived it was the best life and he would end up coming to resign himself to fixing things with his wife and moving forward with his with his life and then and then he would be uh you know he he would uh not have to suffer the heart attack or something and spoilers that both is and is not what ends up happening so there are adequate 
twists and turns and unexpected things happening in the book to keep it from being entirely trite but that is basically what ends up being being the ending of the book and there there's a starting at around the halfway point of the book there's this long romance between him and another person this woman who he discovers is also caught in this cycle who who is being born and dying at roughly the same in the same windows of time and he they establish a romance that spans all of these lifetimes and it's very grand and grandiose and grandiloquent or however you pronounce that word because it's it's written uh he just squeezes every little bass uh, last bit of profundity out of that relationship as as he can and it gets really tedious and uh definitely overreaches in terms of uh, the imagery of the book, all the shit about dolphins is just so cringy and weird uh, to me. And the, the the recurring, the Mount Shasta thing is some kind of visual metaphor. It's just, it's like really, it, it literally, it's, I'm, <laughs> it's like a Lisa Frank binder in words is the, the visual motif of this book. And it just doesn't work. I mean, the, the premise itself is strong enough to carry the book, as I've said before, and I think that uh, you would have to be a totally incompetent writer to write this premise and not be able to get some kind of uh, emotional gravity out of it or, or not have it be an effective story. And it, again, it was on some level the, the last, um, I, I would say the middle... The, the the third of the four quarters of the book, Act Three, worked for me and on me. I was emotionally invested. I found it, you know, compelling. Um, but it it's just it, it's clumsy. It's a clumsy book. I think it's a little overrated. I don't know that much about it other than sci-fi people seem to like it and include it in the sci-fi genre, which I just. Like a big spoiler, it's not sci it's not sci-fi at all. There is there is uh nothing in the book that would suggest that it is in fact a science fiction story or that the phenomenon has its origins in anything related to sci-fi. If anything, I think the the implication is that it's um it, it's reflective of Hindu mythology that it's it's part of the reincarnation cycle that they're experiencing because they quote from the Bhagavad Gita I think repeatedly and um, it seems much more like something supernatural than something science fiction. There is one little passage where they talk about aliens but it ends up not really being the explanation. They never explain it. The author never explains why it's happening in the end so sci-fi no uh if it is a sci-fi book it's it's a really bad one as uh, as just a standard kind of honestly i kept thinking like this reads like stuff i used to check out of the library blind when i was a kid just pick something off the shelf <clears throat> in the fiction section that you know had something brightly colored on the cover and read it and you know some um run of the mill you know, romance or drama, not that I read romance or whatever, but something a little bit gimmicky and colorful and flashy that was basically um, just kind of a middle brow story was not particularly bad, was not particularly good, kind of, kind of mediocre, kind of a letdown because it was, it was pretty hyped up when I heard about it. So, um, but again, I might be a voice alone in the wilderness on this one. I haven't watched any other videos or whatever. Um, but if you're looking for a hard sci-fi read or a sci-fi read at all, I would stay away from this if that's the flavor that you're after. If you're into romances, if you're into big time-spanning romances or kind of books with gimmicks, this would be, I don't say that pejoratively at all. It's, it's a gimmick, uh, or a premise, I guess then this could be interesting. I, I did keep thinking it would make a good movie. And I, for some reason, I kept casting Tom Hanks as the protagonist. This would make a good late 90s Tom Hanks movie, romance movie, fantasy. I, honestly, I think this is more of a fantasy, a fantasy romance than, than it is a sci-fi. So 
yeah, it's a quick read if you want to just kill a couple days with something that's a decent love story with some fantasy elements to it, then yeah, this is probably going to serve you better than whatever shape-shifting werewolf erotica you were going <laughs> to read otherwise. So, all right, those are my thoughts. Thanks for watching.